Warning, this experiment uses toxic, volatile, and carcinogenic chemicals. They should be performed with gloves in a fume hood. Greetings fellow nerds. In a previous video, we made red smash glow crystals. In this video, we're going to make crystals that glow blue color when smashed. First, get 121 milligrams of copper thiocyanate and 262 milligrams of triphenylphosphine. Then add to it 5 to 10 milliliters of pyridine. I'm using 10 milliliters of pyridine for clarity, but you can use 5. Shake it up and then gently heat it with occasional shaking until everything is dissolved. What we're making is a coordination complex with copper in the center surrounded by two pyridines, a triphenylphosphine, and a thiocyanate ligand. Once everything is dissolved, turn off the heat and leave it for a day or two to evaporate and crystallize. Don't let it completely dry out since we don't want the impurities to solidify as well. Here we are with most of the pyridine evaporated, but not touching the crystals. Now use a pipette and remove all the dirty pyridine. Then wash the crystals a few times with toluene until they are clean. Remove all the toluene and let the crystals dry. And here we have it, dry crystals of triphenylphosphine bispyridine thiocyanate o copper. As I like to call them, blue smash glow crystals. Under ultraviolet light, these crystals exhibit a nice blue fluorescence. This is the same color it will glow when smashed. While not quite as brilliant as the original red smash glow crystals, it's still quite bright. Now for their coolest property. Under low light, take a crystal with a spatula and grind against the wall of the vial. As it's crushed, it will flash a blue light. It's not sparking or generating heat, but it's converting mechanical energy directly into light. What's happening is because the individual molecules are not centrosymmetric, when the crystal is broken up, the surface possesses an uneven charge distribution. The charges recombine and release energy that excite the fluorescent property of the crystals and produce the light we see. Which, as expected, is the same emission wavelength as fluorescence emission. Eventually, once the crystals are completely ground into a powder, they will stop working. But they can be recrystallized from purity and for further use. So that was blue smash glow crystals. Thanks for watching. The idea for this video came from this article in the Journal of Chemical Education. In this video, we'll show you very weak triboluminescence at home with duct tape. In this video, we're going to make a triboluminescent or smash glow crystals.